since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench and by Junk Be Gone and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into a well, rainy Sunday morning. Welcome into the Sports Source here in the Junk Being On Studio. We appreciate you being with us. No race today, so we should be with you for the next 90 minutes. I want to thank my director, Chris Lane, already because we were just standing over here chatting away, and he's like, 30 seconds, John, <laughs> shut up and get to your post. So uh, <laughs> we are packed. We got a lot of stuff for you. We're going to talk baseball, even though it's probably going to be rained out today. We're going to talk basketball in the roster. We've got Mark Pankratz in here. Uh, let's talk about the four newcomers. We've even got some statistical comparisons comparisons to show you who in the SEC their styles uh, look like in terms of analytics. Uh, that's going to interest you. We'll talk about all the stuff that came out of the SEC meetings this week. We'll talk uh, TV schedules because the first three weeks have been revealed. Uh, and then we've got a big announcement coming up later in the show. So let's dive right into this thing. First segment of our show brought to you by the Garza Law Firm. And if you find yourself in need of an attorney, most likely you're going to be nervous, worried, in need of some peace of mind. A quality legal team can provide that. And there's no more qualified legal team in all of East Tennessee than Marcos Garza and the Garza Law Firm. Ask around, folks. Check reviews. You'll find it's true. Nobody beats these guys. And if you need an attorney, if you're worried, if you need peace of mind, you can get the peace of mind by calling the Garza Law Firm. Check out GarzaLaw.com to learn more. Good, good people. Longtime part of this community. Marcos Garza and his team. All right. Um, John Pennington, and this is my team, and I'm happy to have these guys. I don't know if they would claim that, but right over here, Jimmy Himes, right here, Josh Ward, the aforementioned Mark Pancras right there, Chuck Cavalieris, and we still got Bob Hodge waiting in the wings, and we actually have wings here, so he's over there. Uh, Tennessee beats Indiana 12-6 to yesterday. It was their second win in the regional, so they've coasted through to the regional finals, which were scheduled for 6 o'clock tonight. Indiana and Southern Miss were going to play the early game. That's an elimination game. The winner would play Tennessee and would have to beat the Vols twice uh, to advance. So uh, when you uh, look at what Tennessee's done so far, I'll start on this side of the panel, it's kind of been smooth sailing, which was expected. Uh, Southern Miss, if you wind up facing them, it's a rematch of last year's Super Regional down there in Hattiesburg. Uh, it just Are we being too lackadaisical about this? Because I'm looking at it thinking – yeah, they're going to breeze through this. There's, there's no problem. Is that the way everybody feels? I thought it would probably be easy for Tennessee, and it's been easier than I thought. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, th I mean, this offense has appeared unstoppable through most of the season, and their, their um, opposition really didn't have much of a chance. Northern Kentucky didn't have strong pitching. Tennessee took advantage of it. And then uh, Indiana, the same deal. So Tennessee was set up for success with the number one overall seed, yeah. and they've taken advantage. I think it'd be hard to bet against them because the pitching staff, they don't have the greatest starting rotation, but their bullpen and the arms they have, they're outstanding. They have a great bullpen, maybe as good a bullpen as anybody. Uh, also, they hit home runs. They hit a 12th grand slam yesterday. It's crazy. Uh, there's only one team that's hit more in a single season. I think they're fourth all-time in home runs in a season. One of the teams that beat them, that's ahead of them, is the 2022 Vols. It, the way they're hitting it, the way they're pitching it, it's hard to see them losing this regional and not advancing. Super fan Chuck Cavalleras. <laughs> Any reason to fear? There's always reason to be uh, <laughs> aware. I mean, I think you've won, now I think you've won 12 straight region games. Uh, and and yeah. that catches your, to Jimmy's point, I think you're fourth in the country in ERA. How, however, mm -hmm. they kind of mix and match that. So, yeah, if somebody was to jump out there and jump up four or five to nothing, Maybe. I mean, you almost have to have a left-hander with three good pitches, right? Yeah. you got to have more than just the fastball, like the Indiana pitcher. So I, I, don't, I don't think you should let your guard down just yet. I mm -hmm. mean, you still got to beat somebody and then go on and host the region final. But it, it, Southern Miss could get interesting. All right. Well, I want to go you, ahead and jump you can, in. You could skip me because I was at the game last night, yeah. and like three and a half hours in, it's still a seventh inning, and it's rain. <laughs> I'm like – this is why I'm a basketball guy <laughs> yeah. and an Inside. indoor sports guy. Yeah. Yeah. Four uh, hours without extras. Yeah, right? really. Well, let's talk a little bit about the job that Tony Vitello has done. Since, mm -hmm. we, since one, it's raining today. It's probably going to rain it out. But also, 
uh, we think they're going to coast. So uh, let's talk about <laughs> what Vitello has done in putting this program in this position. It's unprecedented, mm -hmm. and I want to compare it to something we talked about last week, and it's good that you're here too. Uh, this will make people happy. When in doubt, let's create kind of a controversy. <laughs> um, who's the better hire? Rick Barnes, who we talked at length about last week and what he's done. Elite eight. He wins titles. He just won the SEC. He keeps you in the top ten. He out-recruits Kentucky for transfers. Just amazing the job he's done. Tennessee yeah. basketball has never been – no offense to the six years you guys were over there, <laughs> but um, it's never been this consistent, this top of mind in all areas, and there's no off-field issues to boot. Right. All right. Tony Vitello is kind of doing the same thing in baseball. Now, it's a shorter period. We don't, we, he hasn't been here a decade yet, but what he's done is he's taken a program that has had its moments, but never consistent quality like he's got it going right now. So my question would be, and I'll put you on the spot. Welcome back, Mark. Good to have you here. Who was the better hire, Rick Barnes or Tony Vitello? And there is no splitting the baby here. Both. Both. Well, nope. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, there is still two. How Barnes is being judged right now is can he win in the Final Four? Can he get to the Final Four, win a championship? Vitello has obviously taken this program number one in the country, number one in the seed. Uh, what he has done is probably more impressive for where baseball was uh, for when he started to where it is now. Um, but I think it's still to be determined if he can advance be, and, and win the World Series. Yeah, both you know, of these guys are looking for championships. Here, here's the thing to me. Rick Barnes fell into your lap, right? You said, who's the better hire? That was a pretty easy hire when Texas says, get out of here, and Tennessee says. A lot of people were against right. it, though, at the time. They but were still, it. It, we did, it was manna from heaven. Right now, guys, Rick. Tennessee yeah. is the only <laughs> college baseball program in the country with at least 50 wins in four straight years. And what he has done for Vitello for this time of year, where you're getting all this free publicity for your university, you're ranked number one, you're the number one seed, I'm going to say Tony Vitello is the better hire because you had to go find him. All right, so we got two Vitellos over here. Do we, we have get, a Barnes? Do we get three. Um, when I look at what Vitello's done, and it's been a shorter period of time, he's been to the College World Series twice, which to me – it's eight teams that go, right? So I'm going to equate that to an Elite Eight. Barnes has been to one Elite Eight. I, I think, Chuck, that Tennessee's won 50 games three of the last four years, I think. They had won 50 games prior to Vitello's arrival. Look at the attendance. Look at the interest. Look at the block parties they're having. I, I would, uh, by narrow margin, I would go with Tony Vitello. Okay. Josh? Yeah, it's a sweep. Barnes is terrific. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. recognizes that. But uh, I would also add... SEC baseball is as good as it gets, top to bottom. Yes. He entered a conference, Tony Vitello did, with Tennessee at or near the bottom of the mm -hmm. league, having to jump over a bunch of national title contenders. SEC basketball is not that. It's a good league, and it's getting better. But where Tennessee was when Vitello arrived and who he had to beat out to put Tennessee in a position where it's the number one team in the country yeah. two out of three years, uh, number one overall in the tournament, uh, is remarkable. It's almost unreal what he's done, except for having seen it happen. Can I two more points on that, Vitello? When we're in the NIL era, Vitello's personality and and recruiting yeah. is is a win for him compared to Barnes. You know, Barnes being older, where he's at, I, the, hadn't hurt him. It, it's not hurt him, but if you're looking at his age and yeah. his personality over the next five to ten years of a right. program, if you're trying to build a program, I think Vitello on the NIL. But the other side of it, from the financial standpoint. You can't get basketball wrong. Like, right, we're going to talk about next later segments about revenue and what yeah. sports are generating the most. We've seen Texas went and hired uh, uh, Shaka Smart, it's been a who ton was of money. the hire. That was a ton of money. They got it wrong. They lost a lot of money. So the fact that Barnes exceeded expectations for where he places himself in the athletic program, yeah. it's a big hire. Yeah, that's why it's not a clean sweep. I'm going Barnes. Just a little bit. And the main reason is just you talk about the exposure he's bringing to, to Tennessee through baseball. Have you seen the ratings for baseball versus the ratings for college basketball? I mean, to me, it's the two different sports. One makes second most money. It's the only other moneymaker on campus. The other one doesn't. One gets more eyeballs. Look at the TV media revenue you get for basketball versus baseball. Again, it's like this. I mean, you could, I could make a case either way, and if you guys had all said Barnes, I'd probably be making the Vitello case. <laughs> Is that a double dribble? Yeah, it's a double <laughs> dribble. Uh, but double I think I, the thing, everything you say about Vitello – yeah, he's older, but I can kind of say the same thing about Barnes. I mean, when he took over, Tyndall, you were in NCAA trouble again. Uh, your roster didn't look great. 
Um, you know, there was a little bit of apathy. Uh, he has packed the place in terms of people going over there. Um, I, in terms of his NIL and recruiting, granted, he's the grandpa compared to young, uh, cool guy Tony Vitello. But again, he just went toe to toe with Kentucky and grabbed Chaz Lanier. Uh, so, and you look at Dalton Connect, who he grabbed last year. So you can make it's it, the the mm -hmm. question is fun, and we're going to give it to you in a poll question a little <laughs> bit later, so you can weigh in. I think it's going to be close, yeah. uh, and I think it should be close. Those are two. I don't know if you've got anybody even close to those two hires over the last twenty years. That yeah. in terms of, and we'll see how it ends for these guys. Yeah. But Pearl would be up there if it hadn't ended the way it ended. There aren't many guys. I mean, Fulmer was a great hire, but it was already built when he got here, right. and then it was down when he when he left. Majors, he was fired. It took him a while to. Build. These two are really standing out over here. Right. I guess I remember the seasons, guys, when Tennessee couldn't qualify for the SEC tournament, where you weren't even one of the in teams baseball. that got to play yeah. in Hoover. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now look where you are. So, I mean, I, I still think it's Vitalo, but I can see well, it's a bigger sport, more revenue, well, basketball, all things being equal. To, to your point about Barnes, too, remember when he recruited a class and, like, one of the highest-ranked players was 175? And they're like, what in the world are they doing over there? And one of those guys ended up being the two-time SEC player of the year. Right. Yeah. That's pretty strong. In the NBA, uh, in yeah. developing your players. Yeah. It, it's, a, uh, it's an embarrassment of riches in terms <laughs> – and the interesting thing is, kudos to John Curry yeah. for the Vitello yeah. hire and Dave Hart, <laughs> yeah. the unpopular Dave Hart, for the Rick Barnes hire. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, when we come back, let's dive into Tennessee's new-look basketball roster. We held off last week. Wanted to get Mark's take on the four newcomers. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? we got comparisons to other SEC players and to some UT players in terms of their style. That's interesting. Much more to come. Come on back. We'll talk basketball next. Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company, the oldest building materials company in Knoxville and the best building materials company in Knoxville. Absolutely the best team you'll ever work with. Uh, just they are friendly, they are helpful, they are knowledgeable. It's great people. I, I, it stands out. The reason I always mention it, it stands out, the people at A.G. Hines Company. And it's a family-owned business right from the Hines family through their employees. You will see it when you walk through the doors. You'll pick up on it. Good people, good company, and if you are doing a do-it-yourself project, you started with A.G. Hines Company, just like your great-great-granddaddy did here in Knoxville <laughs> when they opened back in 1920. All right. Uh, we've been waiting to break down the Vols' new hoops roster until Mark could join us, so let's do that now. I want to put up some uh, graphics here that are going to show you, and it, <laughs> we'll leave it up for a while in case you want to walk to your screen and stare at it. Uh, <laughs> all my guys have a little printed-out version, but j basically at the top are the guys who left either through the transfer portal or through graduation. I don't put DJ Jefferson on there because he really didn't have many stats last year. It's got the returning guys next. And then the newcomers, Darlinston, Dubar, Chaz Lanier, Igor Milicic, and Felix Akpara. We never get a Smith, Jones, <laughs> Johnson, and Thomas. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it's tough for me to know these names. But anyway, you see what those guys average, and we've compiled it, we've com combined it down there at the bottom of each row. It's interesting that it doesn't work this way, but in terms of just stats, they basically brought in the exact same number of stats coming in that left. So that's an interesting note. But, Mark, I want to get a couple of quick questions from you. So, like, 30 seconds off these first two, and then we'll get into conversation. Um, were you surprised that Adu and Awaka both left? Yes, I was surprised that, that, that both of them And we'll left. leave that graphic up, but go ahead. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I was really surprised by Adu. I think that was the first one. I, you know, that's a perfect example of an IL and, and him wanting more money than what they were willing to give. Um, but then I thought maybe when, when – um, Adu left, and they opened back the door up for Iwaka to come back. I thought he may. Um, so I was surprised at both of us, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the mm -hmm. other one, uh, Carr, Estrella, Phillips, they should all have an opportunity for more minutes. They all showed promise. And when, I thought Estrella played better than Adu or Iwaka against Edie in the NCAA tournament. So I, I'm sitting there. I want to see what this guy can develop into. You're thinking there's tons of minutes there, but then you go get four transfers in. Yeah. Does that become a roadblock? To those young guys stepping up and moving forward, well, or is it I, just competition? One, I think Estrella. I think that's a perfect example of uh, you're looking at it as a lens of expectation. There was very little expectation yep. of him to do anything, and since he just kind of held his own, we think that he played really well. There's a ton of opportunity at that position. He was the only one of that group that didn't play scared. He, he that's competed. What stood out 100%. To me. He competed. I agree. Um, 
I, I like Carr. Of the guys that are coming back, I think he's got – if he can put some, some weight on, some muscle on, I like his versatility. Um, but this is the era that we're in. If you want to play Power 5 basketball, you want to play in the SEC, you've got to know that free agents are going to yeah. be coming every year. And so um, I like that those guys stuck it out. And I'm excited at, uh, to see how they can add to the roster. All right. Well, let's let everybody jump in here after Mark finishes up. My question for you, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses with this roster? Well, with, the, including the four guys that we'll get to in a second. But uh, you can start bringing, talking about those transfers as well. Yeah. First of all, if you look at the, 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 the comments of Barnes and staff about each one of these guys, one of the first things that he mentions in all of them is their culture, their family, their work ethic. You've seen programs like Arkansas. They had a really good year two years ago, went to the Final Four. Yeah. Then they nosedive. And they're in the NIL, they're in the portal transfer because they're focused on stats and stars. They're not focused on culture. And every comment that Barnes made about these guys, they fit the yeah. hardworking culture, the team environment, which I think is huge in this era that we're in. I like the versatility of, of what we, we added. You got ball screen offense in, in, um, in Igor. He's a bigger guy, but he can stretch it by shooting the basketball. You see clips, watch footage. He can roll and finish at the rim. He can defend ball screens, which I think was a, one of the things that Adu did well. And when he wasn't performing on offensive uh, side of the ball, he'd come out. And Awaka really struggled in that. I think uh, um, uh, Igor can do that on both ends. Uh, and then there's a presence in Felix. I think he knows his role. Coach Pearl was in town two weeks ago, and he was talking about all this NIO money that he had still left to spend. He had four scholarships at the time and he was looking to bring on a backup four. He could not find somebody that would be willing to, be to come as a backup. Yeah. And I think the fact that Felix, he may end up starting, but he's willing to be a backup type role player and not have to be the guy. And so I'm excited about what they did. And then obviously Chaz can go in and score the basketball, which is something that we're gonna need. Strengths, weaknesses, what stands out to you about this roster? Yeah, so uh, the front court depth, I think, can become stronger if Estrella and or Phillips take a step. Because we, we would see the Estrella minutes, but not consistently throughout yeah. the season. His development with Akpara and uh, Igor coming in to replace the guys that are leaving, they can be deeper there. Uh, replacing Connect is, is a big question, obviously, with what he can do scoring-wise. But I think they can help replace what he was able to do with more shooters. Igor, to me, is really intriguing. What he... What he can do, how he can change how they'll play offensively because his proven outside shooting ability, which they haven't had from a front court guy under Rick Martins. Well, you got three of these guys that we're going to talk about in a second that are shooters. I mean, yeah, with the exception of Akpara, <laughs> all these guys are shooters. Now, the problem is you've had guys that transferred in here before that were had reputations as shooters, and they didn't follow up on it. Connect did, obviously. Uh, but, Chuck, do you feel confident that these guys are going to slide right in and – their shooting in the A Sun is going to translate to no, their shooting in I the mean, ACC. I, not, not, not a hundred percent. But yeah, I mean, he ranked number ten overall, I think, in the portal. He was the number one of Lanier. Yeah, yeah, Lanier. When you got him, I mean, it, and to Mark's point, maybe you need a big. I'm thinking about how that Tennessee struggled matchup wise against some of like Mississippi State. Every big team they played. Every big yeah. team they played. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. But where can you find one of those guys? And Barnes is really good about later on, like in August. You know, he's gotten players as late as August. And even, you know, when you think of Vescovi, he was like a January edition. So maybe he's just going to wait and see if there's an international top player that kind of you would be available. But it's tough to find somebody at this point, isn't it? I think the, I think the biggest unknown is what you saw with Vescovi last year. You know, you got guys that have been used to handling the ball a ton. They've been the focal point. And now with Zakai, who's going to be your dominant ball handler, you know, how do these other guys fit in to the offense knowing that he's going to be the dominant ball handler? And you've got guys that have been used to scoring 20 points, 17 points, 13 points when they've had the ball in their hands a lot. So you've got to be able to learn how to play without the basketball for this team to really elevate. Well, I mean, Vescovi didn't have a great year scoring last year, but he was second on the team in assists, third on the team in steals. Yeah. I mean, he brought in – he just was in the right spot. We showed, lot, we showed those rebounds. numbers last year. Yeah. When he was on the floor, the team played better. Mm -hmm. uh, he was always in the right spot. That's why I think Dubar can be like Josiah. Like, you look at his rebounding is, is similar to Josiah's rebounding. Defensively, he can switch out and guard some forwards if, if a team's got a bigger matchup and he can guard guards. So that versatility defensively. It will also be interesting to see what happens with Jemai Meshack moving forward. So well, he he played a mentioned. huge role, I think, in mm -hmm. that culture part that Mark brought up with yeah. the guys coming in. Uh, that mattered. Cameron Carr is another player that I think is really intriguing to see what develop they get out of him. His scoring ability, I think, is there. 
if he can put it all together and kind of be a microwave guy off the bench for Tennessee. We're actually oh, – go ahead. If you got the, 10 the seconds. Only, the only thing I would say, I don't think it would hurt to give Zig or somebody else on the court take away a few minutes there oh, and yes. not get him worn mm-hmm. down so much. Um, I subscribe to a uh, site, CBB Analytics, and uh, NBA teams use them. College teams use them. That's where we get a lot of our stats and analytics from. And I get people that always say, oh, there's nerds, nobody cares. Coaches <laughs> care. The co- these are the same numbers that UT and other schools look at. But what you can do with them is you can pull the style of play through stats and numbers and other metrics that they have. Style of play for guys in the portal and then compare them to SEC guys, for example. And that's what we did. Let me go ahead and put this up here. Uh, You've got the top nine guys in the SEC that these guys compared to statistically. Akpara, you'll look down there in about fifth on the list. He plays just about an 85% similarity with Tobey Awaka. He's more Awaka than he is Adu in terms of their comparisons. Milicic, you see the SEC guys, but down at the bottom, style of play, 79%. Is a match with Dalton Connect. And then you've got Chaz Lanier, Dalton Connect. <laughs> Darlinston Dubor. Who is his game most like in the SEC? Dalton Connect. Now, for those of you saying, woohoo, now we got three Dalton (laughs) Connects. Mark and I were chatting yesterday, and he said, yeah, can you pull all the numbers for transfers into the SEC? So take a look at this next graphic, just in case you're thinking everything's great. Uh, Last year, there were 54 transfers who played across the SEC's 14 schools. They averaged eight points a game and three and a half rebounds a game. 19 of the 54 averaged double digits. Only six averaged 15. Only one, some guy named Dalton Connect, averaged 20. So when you look at those comparisons and those numbers, that's great, and it's interesting that they play a shoot-the-darn basketball style. But you got to remember, for every Dalton Connect, there's a Victor Bailey. There's a E.J. Anasicki. There's a lot of these guys that don't turn out. Anything stand out to you about those comparisons, Mark? No, I, I think you did a good job of bringing people back to reality of what, what it <laughs> Thank is. You. Um, it's rare for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but, but I, I, I do think they, they did a heck of a job in, in the transfer portal in the NIO world. And, and, and I think it's going to be key to how these other guys, you talked about uh, Meshach, and I think that leads into the Zakai conversation. I do think that's a big unknown about this team. It was last year. I think it's why we wore out at the end of the year is Zakai just played too many minutes leading up to the season. And so who can be a backup point guard is an unknown for sure. Sounds good. We are miles over. So when we come back, we're going to bring Jimmy Himes back in here. He had a chance to chat with Rick Barnes this week at SEC meetings down in Destin about the expectations for next year. Can this team be as good as it was last year? Elite eight SEC champions? Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. If you're looking for a fun new vacation experience, rent your own private cabin in the beautiful Smoky Mountains for your whole crew this summer or this fall. Or go ahead and book it for the winter and the holidays. TripAdvisor, those users of TripAdvisor voted Parkside Cabin Rentals Traveler's Choice Award winner again. Happens every year. Find out why. Visit ParksideCabinRentals.com today and find the right cabin for you, your friends, your family. It's a great way to do it. The Ogle family will take good care of you in Sevier County. Parkside Cabin rentals. All right. I want to put up a poll here. We'll, well, yeah, we'll put in the poll, then I'll introduce that fellow down there. But the question is very simple today. Which was the better hire, Rick Barnes or Tony Vitello? Ooh, we got some people who've gone online. Vitello in the lead. So I want to see how that thing plays out. Who was the better hire? And everybody can put in their own criteria. Uh, so you tell us, Barnes or Vitello, the better hire? Uh, and right down there, Bob Hodge. Bob, thanks for being with Glad us today. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Okay, Jimmy, you were down in Destin for the SEC meetings this week. You talked mm-hmm. to Rick Barnes a little bit about the expectations uh, that are, that are going to be weighing on his team this year. What did he tell you? Well, I asked him uh, whenever Tennessee lost four in the portal, uh, he had said the idea is to go out and, and make yourself better. I said, did you do that in the portal? He said, yeah, I think we did. And he pointed out that he's got a, a really good defensive-minded center. He's got uh, at least one guy that – that could, I don't, I don't want to say elite score, but a good score. Mm-hmm. He's got two others very capable scores. He likes the makeup of what they put together in the transfer portal. So he, he was very optimistic about this team. Was it, uh, how does that compare to his past talks with you before a season? For example, does he seem more confident, <coughs> less confident? Where does the confidence 
level. Do you think mm. – I, I, he seems to be a little more at ease the last couple of years. And I don't know if that's because he's just, hey, I've got this thing built now. I don't, I'm not saying he's slacking, but he seems to be a little more confident to me outside looking in. Well, but you're I'm, dealing with him one-on-one -on -one in these meetings, so what do you think? Yeah, what I've seen from him previously is he, he's not going <clears> to <throat> go into a season saying, I don't feel good about this yeah. group. But I do sense that he feels more confident about what he's got here. I think he really likes it. And to Mark's yeah. point about the culture part, he wants to make sure these guys fit in, and he believes they do. And he also uh, relies on his players who are around these recruits. How do you feel about them? And they all feel good about it. So I do think he's probably a little bit more confident with this group and the expectation. He didn't – I don't think he knew what he had in Connect last year, right? Right. Okay. I think he has a pretty good idea what he's got with this group. So I think he's pretty confident about where this team's going. Mark, could this roster – and I know you watched a hell of a lot of Hofstra games last year. <laughs> but looking at this roster, is it possible that they could be Elite Eight SEC champion level again? Well, when you look at the, the strength of this league, I mean, you look at the seven SEC teams finished in the top 20 as far as how they performed in the portal, mm -hmm. as far as attracting talent to the SEC yep. with what's already coming back. It's going to be hard to duplicate an SEC championship. Uh, in an Elite Eight run. Mm -hmm. I wish coaches were more honest if they really didn't like aspects of their team rather than mm -hmm. telling the fans all summer, like, hey, we're going to be great, we're going to be great. Like, be real with the – like, there yeah. is some question marks. Mm -hmm. I, I think they'll struggle to get to the Elite Eight. Uh, I like that Zakai is, senior, is seniority on the roster, but I think it'll be hard. It's a lot of turnover. Of course, look at Alabama yeah. last year. Yeah. Tons of turnover, yeah. all burning all the transfers yeah. and went to the Final Four. I just noticed – and maybe it's simply the roster is deeper now, and this is why he can say this, but – Three or four years ago, I don't remember him talking as much about, well, we want to compete for championships and a national title here and go back to win. And those little snippets are thrown out now. And, again, maybe that's just, well, we got a better roster. We're top ten every year, so I can say that. But to me, that's a difference. I don't remember him saying that five years ago, competing – not in a year-in, year-out kind of. He just lets it out with a little bit more ease, it seems to me. But I could be wrong. Bob Hodge, I know you find that hard that I could be wrong. Yeah. That's true. Uh, my question for you is, in an era where these rosters turn over, where you got to put up graphics like this and it's yeah. 100 guys going, people have always, media fans, we all do predictions. Since the first guy threw a, since the first Aztec threw a decapitated head through a hoop down in, <laughs> <laughs> in Mexico, um, there have been people making predictions. Is it more ridiculous now? Is it fair to be making these predictions and putting them out there? No, oh, I mean, it's, I, I think it's going to be fair, but is it harder? Of course it is. I think used to. Well, the transfer portal, if you looked at Tennessee last year and take the transfer portal out of it, you know who's graduating, you know who's going to come back. Okay, you got a fairly good idea of, okay, they're missing this, they're missing that. You've brought in, to me, they're, they're still unknowns. Even though you've brought in guys that other teams wanted, they're still unknowns. And what also makes it so much harder to predict Okay, Arkansas won very good last year after being really good the year before. What's Arkansas next year? Yeah. Who knows what Arkansas is going to be next year? And that obviously is going to impact where Tennessee is. So is it fair? Yeah, it's fair. Can you count on is it? Is it accurate? No. no. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just don't think you can. I think it's probably less accurate now because than it's we, ever we been. Got, no. mm -hmm. There's four new guys at Tennessee that everybody's how. Yeah, they they're not all going to hit. They haven't played an SEC game yet, yeah. you know. So. Well, and again, it, you look at Alabama, and I've seen people say, well, it worked for Alabama. It's like, once, we'll see if that continues. And it's not, not exactly. easy to completely re turn over your roster every single year. Quickly, on, and one thing why I think Barnes is high on this team, I think if you had a puzzle and you said, okay, I need to this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece, I think he filled the pieces he wanted to fill. Right. And I think that's why he feels good about this team. All right, uh, very good. When we come back. Sharing money with players, that was the big topic at the SEC meetings, it's a big topic at all of these conference meetings. Uh, and one thing you're hearing as a result of the sharing money with the players, budget cuts everywhere else. People are going to have to make do with less money. At Tennessee, who's going to feel that pinch more than anyone else? We'll discuss that next. Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. The weather is going to go from warm to crazy hot and humid in the next uh, few weeks. That means mosquitoes will be around to annoy you, to bite you, to try and give you their nasty little diseases. 
That's because they're rotten little creatures, and you should kill them. <laughs> Southeast termite and pest control, they do it for you. Um, and uh, ants. Oh, I had a string of ants that were trying to get into my house recently. Got to get Southeast termite and pest control to take care of that. Uh, they do a great job. They've taken care of my house for many, many years. Whenever I call them out, the problem I've got goes away. And if I did enough of the maintenance, the, the ahead of time stuff, I would never see an ant in there. Southeast termite and pest control since 1971. There's no better pest control in all of East Tennessee. Get in touch with them this week. All right. As it stands, athletic departments around the country are bracing for budget cuts. The House settlement set it up to where schools will be sharing at least $20 million a year or so with their athletes. Uh, that's coming down the road. Who knows when? Who knows what the cap's going to be? Who knows how many of these schools are actually going to abide by that? But SEC schools will. Uh, because of that, uh, you've got a lot of people talking about budget cuts. Bob, football makes the most money. Football spends the most money. I don't think football is going to feel the pinch as much as anybody else. Do you agree with that? Do you think it's – is it going to be the big fish who suffer or the guppies? In the end, it's going to be the guppies. But I think they're all going to suffer a little bit at first. You're going to have to figure out what you're doing. And I think there will be a little bit of, you know, shared suffering for everybody. But in the end, how many non-revenue sports can you keep around – if you're going to have to pay everybody something. And, of course, then you get into Title IX and tens and twelves and all the different titles you're dealing with. <laughs> but I think in the end, I think the little sport you're going to see that contract. I just don't see any way around it. Because if you're going to stay competitive in, in football, of course, rules are going to be the same for everybody. Basketball, baseball, softball. Okay, how much room does that leave you for rowing? Well, there, there's talk that you could cut staff sizes, which is the opposite of the way it's been going. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's like unlimited staffs was the push six weeks ago. They were talking about, why do we even have limits? And now it's like, okay, we're going to limit these staffs possibly to save money there. Uh, assistant coach salaries, you're not going to – the big guys, they're going to make their money. But you may see a slowdown on some of these assistants that are making, you know, two coordinators each making a million dollars. That may be a thing of the past. Uh, there's talk about facilities. For years, that was, oh, we got to do that. It's a recruiting arms race. Well, now the recruiting arms race is just how much money you can hand to the student. Uh, so facilities may stop being a big expenditure. All these things, though, I still think it's going to be more about the smaller sports first yeah. rather than the big money maker. Well, I do too, but there was a coach who I can't name because it was said in confidence. Oh, he come said, on, nobody's watching. He told, nobody, oh, don't say that. <laughs> you have great ratings. We do have great uh, ratings. There was a coach that said, I don't want boosters to donate for facilities. I need them to donate for players so that I can go out and spend money on players. So facilities might take a back seat in a lot of these sports as well. Josh? Yeah, we might not see as many stories about napping pods that are being put in or uh, water yeah. slides to yeah. figure out a way to spend the money that they have. Uh, that was part of the point of, okay, how do we mm -hmm. cut expenses? And I'm sure they're going to attempt to save sports and cut expenses where they can. Some of that will be with people. Uh, Trev Alberts, the Texas A&M athletic director, this week was talking about the expense problem. And yeah. it's not been as big of a problem previously because they were saving on the new expense that's coming in. So I think they will have to look – audit within and say, okay, where have we been wasting money? Where can we get rid of that? And then figure out where they are from there. All right, let's talk to the financial advisor over here. Uh, financial <laughs> advisor who used to be an assistant coach yeah. in a, in a non-football sport. When you look at this, I'm guessing you're more glad than ever that you're now out of it in terms of being an assistant. I mean, it's, it's tough, and I think it's going to get tougher. What, what's your take on all this? Well, it's just what Bob said. There's going to be the ones that decide to embrace it as a business and the ones that decide to try to appease everybody. The ones that embrace it as a business, it's going to be your lower sports. It's going to be your non-revenue, jittering aspects of your business that you're going to cut first. Yeah. And, and the big sports are going to continue to win. Football is going to be completely fine. And, and I just look at what does the NFL do? What does NBA do? Their facilities are poor. They pay all these guys all this money, and then they have to go have the facilities in their, in their house. They, they right. hire the yes. nutritionists themselves. Yeah. They, they've got the stadiums this. are nice, but the, the workout rooms don't compare Correct. to the college. And those guys have their workout guys, their nutritionists, yeah. and so the players have to do them themselves. The, the, 
the, the professional, it's just going to become professional sports. And the unfortunate part there is, my mom's a volleyball coach, my sister's a volleyball coach, I grew up around a lot of these other sports, but the reality is they're a revenue loss for the university, and the ones that decide to treat it like a business are the ones that are going to flourish, they're top programs, and, and it's going to be some shrapnel, but it's just the reality. And I'll just say this, in terms of running it like a business, Tennessee's president, businessman, isn't he? He is. He's a very successful one. businessman. And Danny White seems to be pretty pretty clued in to the, the art of business and making money. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you're talking about where the cuts are going to come at Tennessee, it's going to be harsh and it's going to bother people, but it wouldn't surprise me in the least if you lose some smaller sports. Well, in, in some of those smaller sports, you better be careful. If you cut a women's sport, you're going to have to cut a men's sport. Yep. you got time but, money. And, you have to... and, again, all this is coming toward a head where football is going to be its own thing, yep. more than likely. But yep. All right, when we come back, which Tennessee sports specifically make money? There are only two. We'll show you the numbers. Uh, but also, uh, how would you feel about advertiser patches on that pretty orange Tennessee home jersey? Because probably coming. We'll discuss all that. Come on back. Welcome back. This segment of the Sports Source brought to you by Madisonville Marine. Skeeter bass boats, suncatcher pontoons, aqua patios, craval boats, hurricane deck boats. Man, they've got them all. No one in East Tennessee carries as many boats, as many makes and models as Madisonville Marine. Get down there, Highway 411 North in Madisonville. It's great big. They've got a showroom. They've got a parking lot. They've got a huge parking lot beside that, all with boats. And... Uh, they, they're just spectacular in terms of the customer service, the pricing. There's a reason people come from Georgia, people come from North Carolina. People order their boats to Florida and California and have them shipped. Now, why would you do that? Why would you order from Madisonville Marine? Price, selection. MadMarine.com to learn more. There's no better place to buy a boat. All right, let's remind you of the poll. Let's see where we stand on this thing. Oh, look at that. That's awfully close uh, in terms of who's the better hire Barnes or Vitello. Yeah. So it is 50-50 as yeah. expected. So go ahead and keep telling us how you vote on that one. Um, I want to talk about revenue in this segment, but it gives me a chance to do something else as well. Uh, some folks, I, I do get an email every week, one or two, saying, you guys just cover football and men's basketball. Why don't you cover everything else? And it's simply because the audience is bigger. It's a television show. i got 90 minutes a week to jam everything in. So it's a television show. We focus on what has the biggest audience. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, let's look at the revenue, shall we? This is Tennessee's financial statement from 2023. This is broken down football, men's hoops, women's hoops, and all other sports combined. This is just the income levels. Ticket revenue, it's $31 million for football, $5 million for basketball, $1 million for women's basketball, $1 million for all others combined. Contributions, same thing. Media rights, this is what the big-time media pay. Football gets $15 million on media rights. Men's hoops, $4 million. Women's basketball, 19,000. Wow. Not million, thousand. All other sports, 23,000. Now let's look at the, the next one, if we can flip that one. All right, here's your finances. Total operating revenue on the top line, total operating expenses beneath that, and then the surplus or deficit down below that. Football makes 67 million in 2023. Men's hoops made 14 million. Women's hoops lost about 5 million. All the other sports combined, lost $37 million. Ouch. So that's why football is king and why we were talking that last segment. If you're going to cut expenses like a business, you're not cutting from the one that pays for everything else. You're cutting some of those little things that are a drag on the business. Uh, the future, though, a lot of people are talking about new ways to find new revenue streams. That's the whole thing, new revenue streams. So this was in The Athletic this week, if we can show you this uh, comment. Uh, that means potentially adding things like on-field branding and logos. A proposal, the NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel will consider at its next meeting. A source familiar with the panel's agenda confirmed. Uniform sponsorship patches are another possibility, as are things like expanded naming rights. We've already seen the Food City Center. Uh, dynamic ticket prices and unique fan experiences. Uh, for example of that, Missouri is putting new, they're calling them Tiger Dens. They're putting new, like... Um, kind of in that, that berm area. They're, they're, it's like a caravan thing. Yeah. You can rent this little party thing. New fan experiences. Chuck, I want to know from you as a super fan, though, how are you going to feel when you see a Dish Network patch <laughs> on that Tennessee football or basketball uniform? No, 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 thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say find another way. I mean, 
that looks too much like what some other sports have done. It may be headed that way, you know, but I, I don't like seeing – I think Tennessee, and I think we'll agree on this, has got like a classic <clears throat> look. You can identify the all black, or the all gray. <laughs> which which classic look are we talking They're about? They're orange, baby. And you can identify it. You can spot it. You can see all that. And now you're. And how much is that patch? Are you going to get from that patch? Chuck, you want to say it? Go. How much golf do you watch? Quite a bit. I mean, Never that is it. golf, right? I mean, they the get paid for titles. <laughs> they get paid for. I mean. It just it, it's becoming professionalized yeah. sports, but it's, it's not more, NASCAR, guys. I don't want the uniform well, to look well, like a NASCAR. He say that. Car. It's, it's, it's a, a little logo. patch. I mean, it, yeah. it's and there. I don't like it either, but I'm, I'm but, throwing yeah. in the towel. But, yeah. but it's coming. But I would do it if it means that we can put a better product on the the field in Kentucky or Florida. Or I mean, if it helps us generate in, yeah. in an era that's going to be about revenue to get the talent, which the Jimmys and the Joes are how you win, how you win games. If that's what it's going to boil down to, the, the, the schools are going to have to find ways to generate revenue. The most valuable spot would be right on the helmet. The, yeah. Place that T, well, just it, put your Dish Network logo <laughs> right there. What I think they ought to do is put like little signboards on top of the helmet. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I do think going. the other thing that you're going to see a lot more of that besides the patch is that fan experience piece. Because yeah. now with TV, like they're going to have to find ways to get – People to yeah, the, the that's stadiums. Well, Danny White's, all they're already working on it here too with that huge uh, like party area. Yep. All these schools, I mean, the number of schools who are doing that now because there were professional teams that did that, yep. built a, an arena district basically. Yep. Yeah. And that's how you do it. Uh, and the fan experience, that's fine. It's when you start putting, you know, a whatever kind of logo on the court or on, on the grass turf at Neyland. Man, that's, that's, <laughs> That's that's like messing up the altar. I'm not big on that. Bob, you're a fan. What Four do you think? words. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Mark, you're right about the revenue, and you're right about it's a little patch. You're right about all that stuff. But college sports should have been where we preserve the continuity from era to era to decade to team to team. No. And if they put something on the, on the grass at Neyland Stadium, I mean – you know, you already when a, a player logo. when a player goes into the tent, it's got an advertisement on top of it. Yeah, and and you well, know, okay, why don't we just take that and and maybe we can put something under the grass where it's constantly changing, like the billboards. You know that I, no superimposed. I think you know. Just think, I think I think our logo would look pretty good. Would you, rather, would you rather do that or raise ticket prices? Or I mean, that's the other thing that they're lose out on players. They're, yeah. gonna, they're gonna raise ticket prices. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's the, the, that's I mean, the easiest it, one to do. But that's just it. But it still you sucks. You are right. You are right. But, still I mean, sucks. they're going to drag yeah, you right. kicking and screaming yeah. in. And golfers yeah. are independent yeah. contractors. They're not out yeah. there as part well, of a yeah. team. Yeah. Well, your right. football players, yeah. they end up being, being independent contractors. Being independent contractors, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, the next thing, though, I think you can start the clock on Shields Watkins Field. Oh. It's and I feel bad for Shields and Watkins, who have had the field for 100 years. But I would think that's going to be – some city field? Yeah, something other field <laughs> at well, Neyland Stadium. Well, and you may be down to the point where Neyland Stadium may be your last real honest-to-goodness rock that you don't want to blow up. I just wonder if Lindsey Nelson Stadium, if it weren't named for, for a legendary UT yeah. figure, if that wouldn't be on the the chopping block as well. And we'll see. Oh, it may I still mean, be. I, I'll All bet right. you end up with something, something field at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Mark, thanks for coming in, man. Yep, Appreciate it as always. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about walk-ons. Walk-ons going away in college walk-ons. football. Let's talk about more changes. Walk-ons could be going away. Injury reports, like in the NFL, could be coming. Let's discuss. We'll be back on the Sports Source. Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Daniel Hood Roofing. If you think your roof must be good because there's not a stain on the ceiling, Think again. You can have a leak inside your home for a long, long time before it ever drips down and creates a stain on the ceiling. Have Daniel Hood Roofing come out and do a free inspection of your roof. If they find something, they're going to get your insurance company to pay for it. So, if and especially when we're in the summer uh, storm season right now, if you have any kind of hail damage in your neighborhood, have Daniel Hood Roofing come out to take a look. DanielHoodRoofing.com to learn more. All right, I lied in my last tease. What I talked about is coming up later in this segment. I want to talk about something, and let's go ahead and put the graphic up. Uh, This week, uh, Athlon Sports put out uh, quotes from anonymous SEC coaches about their rivals. A lot of people do this. Jimmy, I think you used to do this, didn't you? I still do for Lindy. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, they had one from an SEC coach, an anonymous coach, uh, talking about 
Tennessee's receivers. The quote was, that staff, meaning Heupel and crew, uh, think Nico will be the best quarterback they've had in that system. And we have a quarterback they're confident in. They're as good as anyone on that side of the football. Hmm. A quarterback they're confident hmm. in. That's an interesting comment. The question is going to be what they put around him this season. They don't have an elite wideout or obvious target. But the Tulane transfer is pretty decent. Josh, I'm yeah. going to start with you because I'm going to encourage people to sign up for Josh and Swain, your radio show. I need to listen to your radio show. But you do a newsletter once a week that's a catch-all at the end of the week. I love it. It's great. I've talked about Thank it you. before. Uh, you put a lot of work into it. And I will go through that thing and say, yep, got that in the show, got that in the show, got that in the show. <laughs> but I'll miss some things. I had missed this story. So you had it there for me. I'll let you start. Uh, is this guy right? Well, the, is the receiver situation as bad as this coach seemed to think? Well, I, th I think he's right about a point. I don't see anybody that's proven to be elite among the wide receivers that Tennessee has. I've heard good things about Chris Brazel. He looks the part physically coming in, has to prove it going from Tulane to the SEC. But nobody has proven, okay, this guy is an all-SEC guy. Also, Jalen Hyatt had not proven that two years ago. And Correct. then he broke out and had a huge season. But I do think Brew McCoy, we have to see him come back healthy, but he's mm -hmm. proven he belongs in the SEC. Yeah, I, I would consider him an obvious target. Yeah, Squirrel he's White a is uh, yeah. a guy that has been productive, has a chance to be better. They have more yeah. depth than a year ago. And they have freshmen like Mike Matthews, who I think has an elite uh, skill, skill set that has to prove what he can do. So I would probably be higher on the receivers than that coach's seeming to be. Yeah. And I would also say if they're as confident in Nico and he produces – That'll raise the level of the wide receiver play. I kind of can see where he's coming from because I think Brew McCoy is a proven receiver in the SEC, but he's a possession receiver. <laughs> I think if he's talking about guys that stretch the field and get your over-the-top game going, okay, we haven't seen that from what Tennessee has. You know, and as far as Brazil, this time last year, we were talking about Thornton. Ah, there's your game changer. And we saw what he did, so maybe he comes back and he gets better. But I can kind of see the point. I think Tennessee's going to prove it. Agree or disagree with the SEC coach, Chuck? I disagree. And I tell you what, it's not just McCoy, the receiver. It's what he brings is a bruising kind of blocker on the outside and enables you to do more things. And it, with Nico, I don't see him having more what confidence or faith in him or whatever right now than they did in Hendon Hooker. Do you guys? I, think I mean, they do not it. yet. I think they do more than Joe Milton last right. year. Well, Joe yeah. Milton last year, <laughs> I for sure. I across the middle in the spring game. Right. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go to that ex extreme just yet. Thornton, get him in a better position outside. I, I just see where the pieces are there if they can pr produce. Brazil, you mentioned oh, him. If he had produce. seven catches yeah. <laughs> over 30 yards at, at Tulane. Well, he's done it at Tulane. Can he do some of that here? If you listen to your heart, you can actually, it beats to the theme of Rocky Top. Uh, Jimmy, you agree or disagree? Don't woo. I, I agree that Tennessee does not have a proven elite receiver coming back. But I also think of what, what Josh Heifel said. This wide receiver room is the deepest we've had at Tennessee. Now, you can debate that, but he sees them every day. So I think it's a really good receiving group even though they don't have an elite receiver. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I, I guess I'm disagreeing a little bit because I think this is a really strong receiving court. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> well, yeah, he's saying it on, I mean, it on the field. You seem to take it, it against that field. coach. With his, com yeah. his comment is that staff thinks Nico will be the best quarterback they've had in that system. That sounds to me like he's talked to people on that staff who feel that way. So you kind of act like, well, they don't like it better than Hendon Hooker. Well, I think they do. I, I think Hendon Hooker wasn't a five-star. Hendon Hooker was a very good quarterback who nobody cared when he came here. He was an also ran at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. Justin Hamilton, who was defensive coordinator up there at the time, came on this show and said he was just another guy. He was pretty good in this system his last well, year. Yes, here. but I think Nico is expected to be better. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll so be. We'll see. Prove it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey. When we that, come back. I now always we'll talk, say prove it. Now we'll talk injuries. <laughs> now we'll talk injuries and we'll talk now whatever else I say. Come on back. <laughs> Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Safety Systems, Home Automation, Security Systems, Fire Life, Safety Systems. They do it all. And they do it all well. So if you're building a new office, a new restaurant, a new condo, or if you're just building your own new home, you have to install all the uh, fire systems and stuff on the of those businesses that come with that, and you have to test them regularly. Trust Safety Systems. They do it all. They do it right. VFL J.J. Surtless is the man to call. Call him and his team this week or visit safetysystems.com. Okay, uh, a couple of quick football notes. I'm going to ask one question of these two, one question of these two. 
Um, first one, it looks like, well, there was talk that the SEC might start having availability reports in football. That was at the SEC meetings this week, meaning injury reports like you get in the NFL. That's, <laughs> man, coaches will lose their mind because that's the opposite of everything a coach wants oh, to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but apparently, Chuck, Yes. Gamblers and betters a baby. are annoying players and trying to get to people on campus mm. to figure out who's hurt, who's injured. So Some of the unscrupulous can't... gamblers yeah, so, might do that. So they're trying to separate. There's a lot of those. There's yeah. a lot of those. And they're trying to <laughs> separate those people from the athletes, which I think makes sense. I don't have a problem with injury reports, but do you trust coaches to be honest with them? Right. Uh, no, but as Steve Sarkeesian of Texas said, if they're not, then fine them, just right. like they do in the NFL. Yeah. The other thing is it LSU. happens in the NFL. Right, I know. L, um, was, uh, it happened with in the NBA, too. But yeah, that's, anyway. but it's, it's So LSU rare. and Missouri do issue injury reports. The Big Ten issues an injury report two hours before kickoff. So you've got some of that out there. Based on what Sankey said at the spring meetings, talking about the access athletes have to every, so, so many people, and there's such a prevalence of gambling out there, I think the SEC is going to adopt an injury policy. Now, there'll be, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be two hours for kickoff? I don't yeah. know. But I do think they're going to go in that direction. Yeah, I, 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 really I like it. What's the penalty of just false information, no information? I mean, it's just one more thing to enforce. I mean, if that's what you're going to go to, it's just another move of being like the NFL, right? I figured you'd look at it as a, one of those degenerate gamblers as in harassing students. That's, and say, that's, that's why I'm not degenerate. That's right. You're generous. <laughs> I'm generous. He's not degenerate. He's generous. <laughs> I'm generous. All right, let me ask you guys. Uh, it also looks like, and boy, the coaches are really squawking about this, that while you may lose, you may get rid of some scholarship caps in other sports, in football, 85 and no walk-ons. We're going to give uh, 85 yeah. scholarships and there are no walk-ons. Coaches are all losing their minds saying, this defeats the spirit of college sports, parentheses, where are we going to get our camp fodder bodies to <laughs> yeah. practice? That's the real problem. Your thoughts on walk-ons and the importance to college football, is that a huge loss if they no longer have walk-ons? I think it is. I think there is a percentage, like there are several reasons why they're important. Part of it can be the, the history of the sport. Uh, there are examples of walk-ons who get an opportunity. Stetson Bennett. Yeah, for sure. Uh, every school has some. Uh, Deshaun Bishop is a local guy that will have a chance to help at running back this year as a mm -hmm. walk-on from yeah. Carnes. Uh, but in the NFL, you have roster limits, but if somebody goes down with injury, Bob, you sign another pro player who is NFL level to come in and replace. You deal with injuries in college, it'll affect practices, how many guys you have available. So I don't like this at all. No, no I, don't, I don't like it for a lot of reasons, but let me go back to what we were talking about earlier. It, it's just what the sport has always been. I mean, I blew the school that was recruiting me. I couldn't get in. Ha <laughs> ha, shocking about that as far as my <laughs> grades are concerned. So I went over to UT because it was low. I found out in about two days of being around yeah. there, God, these guys are really good, you know. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of guys that you can fulfill at least a part of a dream by being able to walk exactly. on and to take that away from people. I, I just don't think it. That's right. I, I do think it defeats the spirit of college football. Well, one thing you're hearing is there are a ton of coaches who were walk-ons. All right, so you would have taken right. – although they would have gone somewhere else and played. Right. I mean, it's not like these kids can ever play. You just can't play at Tennessee or Alabama. You may fit right in fine at UAB. Right. And you may have a scholarship at UAB. Uh, but the issue I have is what Josh hit on. If you have one of these years – like Tennessee had a couple under Butch Jones. We had 30 guys get hurt in a year. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're down to 50 yeah. guys at practice? That's tough. Yeah. Especially at the same position. Yeah, so I, I think I, I think they're going to reach like a compromise. Yeah. I don't think it'll, they'll cap it at 85. I think they may maybe have five or ten walk-ons perhaps, but they will not have a roster of hey, this well, like, all of these, So many of these issues are fixed if they just split football off. Yeah, if they can. Football, it, it, we don't have to worry about Title just, IX or anything. It's its own thing. It's just like Bob Hodge just said. You can try to walk on, and they can ask you to walk off. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, when we come back, the SEC's announced the start times for the first three weeks of football season. Uh, we'll talk about those. How many good games are there? Uh, and then I know a way the SEC can make more cash with their schedule. And we've got a big announcement coming up next. Come on back. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. Man, when it comes to pool tables, that's the place you need to visit. Brunswick, Olhausen, Presidential, Plank and Hyde, all the best brands. And they've got all the different styles as well. Traditional, modern, rustic, tournament style, you name it. Games and Things, they are the billiard store in all of East Tennessee. Even if you, we don't need a table, we've got the table. You just need a new queue. 
They got it. They got all the kinds of stuff down there. Check out Games and Things. It's a fun showroom to go in and visit. I guarantee you, if you think you're going to make a five-minute in and out, plan ahead. It's going to be an hour of just you saying, ooh, this is cool. Oh, that's <laughs> neat. Ooh, I want to sit in that chair. Ooh, I want to look at that. Games and Things or OurGameRoom.com. All right, take a look at our poll results. Ah, Vitello wins it in a close one. Which was the better hire? Most people out there say Vitello, 53%. Rick Barnes, 47%. So 53% of you are wrong. Uh, no, I'm kidding. That's, it, it's a silly question, but it did what I wanted it to do. I thought it would be 50-50, and it is. So there you go, Tony Vitello. Congratulations. It's a nice uh, change for fans of the who was the worst hire that they yes. argued about for many, many years. Great point. Great point. We're in a different era now, hopefully. All right, take a look here. SEC games week one. Um, Tennessee. In week one, the SEC announced the first three weeks. Tennessee's got Chattanooga. It'll be 12:45 on the SEC network. But a lot of crummy games there. What's interesting in this new contract, I think the big winner, and I'm not just saying this to kiss up, the big winner is WATE because this ABC thing, the SEC is going to get two or three ABC game, uh, SEC games a week. Uh, the SEC is going to get two or three ABC games a week as opposed to just one on CBS. I mean, Clemson, Georgia, Miami, Florida, Notre Dame, Texas A&M on Saturday, and then Sunday they got USC versus LSU. Not bad. All right, week two in the SEC. Tennessee down there, 7.30, NC State in Charlotte. That, too, is on Channel 6. That's part of a triple header. They got Arkansas, Oklahoma State at noon, South Carolina, Kentucky at 3.30, Tennessee, NC State at 7.30. A lot of crummy games, though. You look around, Texas, Michigan's a good one on Fox, but McNeese State, Tennessee Tech, MTSU, Samford, Buffalo, Nickel State, Alcorn State. Not a lot of wows on there. Uh, and let's look at week three. Uh, Good game. Alabama at Wisconsin is a good game on Fox. WATE has LSU at South Carolina, Texas A&M at Florida, Georgia at Kentucky, and at the bottom of the list, there you see that fantastic 745 <laughs> kickoff, Tennessee versus Kent State. Who wouldn't be excited about that? <laughs> uh, and we got an announcement to make here, too. That's right. This year, you can start your football Saturdays with us. We'll be going from 11 a.m. to noon. It's the biggest, fastest, funnest, and mostest Vol pregame show in Knoxville television history. If, if I'm going to do it, <laughs> I, was, I was debating whether or not to do it, and I've uh, been talked into doing it. And if we're going to do it, we're going to make it as big and crazy and 100 mile an hour as the Sunday show. We have 15 <laughs> people on the show during Sunday, so why not do it on Saturdays as well? And I know what you're saying. Because you'll go broke, John. <laughs> Possibly, but anyway, you can start your Saturdays right here. So we'll be with you at 11 a.m. Saturdays this fall and 11 a.m. Sundays this fall, both. Gentlemen, in terms of the SEC scheduling, and this is going to be very quick, Greg Sankey didn't have an update. It sounds like the coaches in the athletic department still want more money if they're going to go to a ninth SEC game. ESPN doesn't want to spend more money. But I've got the fix, and it's pretty simple. Look at what the ACC just did. They took a package of games, and they sold it. They took, ESPN had the rights, but they sold it off. They sub-licensed it to the CW, who's trying to do more and more sports. The SEC should go to that ninth game, give, that, give those rights to ESPN, they already own them, and just say, sub-license it. Give it to a streaming service, which none of us want, or give it to another network. SEC gets the money. It's not coming from ESPN, and somebody else is getting SEC football. Why am I having to think of all this? <laughs> Where's Greg Sankey in this? But to me, that would be a fix. That would get you to a ninth game, which is better for fans, uh, and it would also make you money. But it would be mm. streaming. How much of you would hate to see mm. SEC on streaming? Would you buy a streaming service if there was an SEC game there every week, Bob? I would hate it, and I will buy it. Josh? <laughs> yeah, but well, we'd have to. Yeah, right. Business. Yeah, right off, just like the big companies do anyway. <laughs> I mean, Chuck, I've would already do done with the SEC Network Plus with, like, one game a year, correct? Yeah. So I've already done it. No, because I'm retired. <laughs> Very Sorry, good. Jimmy, I'll give you my password. <laughs> there he's good. All right, excellent. But I do think that, that's the, yeah. that may be the solution that, that yeah. we see down the road. How much money? Like that's that what they'll it, ask. They How take much money and, do we get? And sub-license it. All right, when we come back, the business of college sports is changing by the minute. Does Tennessee have the right people in place to deal with all these changes? Remarkably. For the first time in years, I think yes. <laughs> Am I letting my guard down too soon? We'll see what the other guys say. Come on back. Welcome back. This segment of the Sports Source brought to you by Pipe Wrench. Whether it's drain cleaning, plumbing emergencies, 
or the need for a new York HVAC unit, Pipe Wrench should be the top of mind for all you property owners out there. You know, they don't tell you before you buy, before you buy a house that owning a home just means constant upkeep. Oh, you won't pay rent anymore. No, you'll pay a, rug, a, a mortgage and constant upkeep. <laughs> so when you're in that position, you need a company you can trust that you can turn to when <laughs> stuff goes wrong. Pipe Wrench is that company for me. They do a great job. I've used them, uh, and they came in, were right on schedule, and had great people doing it. PipeWrench.com to learn more. Uh, I think you'll have a very good experience with them. That's why they always win these Knoxville best of ratings, because they're a good company. Pipe Wrench. Okay. Uh, did get word a little while ago that the Indiana Southern Miss game had been delayed until 1236. So we'll see if they get that thing. I don't know if that's changed since then, but we'll, we'll see if they get that first game in here in about 12 minutes or so. Uh, and then if, uh, if they do, then Tennessee, again, is scheduled to play the winner of that game at 6 o'clock as, as was previously scheduled. Uh, there's so much change in college sports right now that it's, it's unprecedented. I mean, that's just, we've never seen anything like this. Um, True. Given UT's issues with leadership over the past 20 years, I would normally – be, my teeth would be chattering. Oh, gosh. We'll find a way to screw this up. They'll find yeah. a way to, to, to mess yeah. this up. That would be my feeling. And I think most Vol fans would feel that way. Uh, but with the current crew, who I mentioned earlier, Boyd, White, Plowman, I don't have that feeling. I mean, may be wrong, but I have a feeling you've got the right people at the right place at the right time for all these changes. Am I letting my guard down too early? <laughs> no, no. No, I like where they are. If you look at... Uh, Revenue stream they've got. If you look at the success of the programs, they won the All Sports Trophy three years in a row. They made every post, every sport made the postseason, and I don't remember that happening. Uh, it's it's the best I've ever seen it, and it's not just a one year thing because they've done it three years in a row with the All Sports. So uh, I like the leadership. I like the forward thinking. I like the innovation. I think they're in great shape. And they jumped into that two hundred million club mm -hmm. in terms of the budget over there. Yeah. Uh, there's only like six schools in the country. Right. that are at $200 million. and Tennessee is now one of them. Considering where it was when Boyd Plowman White kind of came mm -hmm. in here, that is a stunning development. Yeah, it just seems like in years past, Joe, at least one of those three top rows were kind of in an ivory tower to me. It's kind of like if they weren't aloof, they weren't really out there. Dante Plowman's going to baseball games, taking selfies. Randy Boyd's helped build a minor league ballpark, owns a minor league baseball team. I mean, and Danny White comes in and says, we're playing for championships, just like Rick Barnes is saying now. So I think, yeah, all three are on the same page big time. It's kind of funny, the NCAA, they, they put this off as long as they can, and now finally they're having to deal with all these changes. They ended up doing Tennessee a favor. That's a great point. Ten years ago, if the NCAA is oh. going through all these changes, that's not the best time for UT. Butch, Tindall, Tindall and, and Hart wouldn't have worked this out? No. Yeah. no. Not as efficiently. That's probably as, not the right time. Do the, the, the Johnny Tindall yeah. boys. <laughs> well, and that and was going to be the, the, the reason I, coming. I think there is confidence in these guys. Look how they handled the situation. Two of them started it after the Pruitt debacle. And you could have had a whole lot of stuff go wrong, and then you add Danny White into the mix. So, yeah, I do think there's reason to have confidence in Well, and, and they also – they knew when to play ball with the NCAA. Yes. Yeah. And, and they, they also knew the NCAA. They also knew <laughs> the, yes, exactly. the NCAA. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I do feel uh, it worries me, though, just every, because we've done this in the past where it's like, is Tennessee, you know, has the Titanic missed the iceberg? And we all go, yes. And then the next day, <laughs> it's right in the iceberg. iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> but I do feel like right now they do have the proper mm -hmm. people with the proper backgrounds mm -hmm. in the right spots as all this stuff swirls around them. And – I don't know who in the SEC I would feel better about. Yeah, exactly. In terms, of, I, I love the fact that you've got a businessman as your president right now, uh, with all of these changes that are coming. So yeah, I, and remember you asked what about this dark cloud that seemed to be hanging over? You yeah. asked about that one. Yeah. It's Finally. sunny now, isn't it? That cloud's gone. Well, actually, outside it's still kind of rainy, oh, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, I don't do weather; I just do sports. Well, there and the other come. thing, Danny White has been on the cutting edge of all these things. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good week. We'll see you next Sunday right back here on the Sports Source. We appreciate you and their sponsors.